Hello, you beautiful bastards. I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. We are going to be looking at another Zerg vs. Protoss for you guys today as we want to explore certain themes and elements of this matchup. It's a matchup we've neglected a little bit on the channel, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, here on the bottom right hand side of Odyssey Ladder Edition in the Red Zerg Trunks, we have one of the smartest players on North America. It's Nero. He is going for a fast gold into gas, followed by a pull. We can see that a third hatchery coming up very quickly. This is hard to punish in this matchup simply because adepts have a hard time with buildings. On the top left hand side of that same map, we have a Final Fantasy IV boss. Maybe it was Final Fantasy IX. I'm actually having a hard time remembering, but he's in the blue Protoss trunks. It's Cagnazzo. And as you can see, he's gone for a really fast expansion, just now finishing the Cyber Core. Low ground expansion uh, to boot. So, very economic game coming out of both of these players. One thing I found interesting, maybe you guys can let me know in the comments below, what is the point of having 17 out of 16 with only one on the extractor? I understand he can't exactly like mine from this, but maybe a long distance mineral mine might be better with this one, or at least go over here to the extractor, or does it work out that this is effective? I don't know, let me know in the comments th below though, guys. All right, so we've got a Stargate opener here by Cagnazzo, and this is really standard these days. I'm gonna go ahead and spoil something a little bit. This is going to be a fast, carrier game on like an economic three bases and I want you guys to notice certain themes in this game predominantly the role of air versus ground and what the advantages are to both um, I would say that the main advantage to a ground army is that it holds its position very well whereas like a Air army is very mobile, it doesn't have to worry about cliffs and things like this, it can go here, it can go here, whereas the ground's going to have to go around here, but the ground is, can stay right here and park itself very, very well with little support, especially in smaller numbers, because Stargates take longer to produce units and the Stargates themselves cost gas, it's harder to get a huge number of units early. So there's a very wide opening in this game that Nero is going to exploit where ground is far superior to air. Now I love this little Ling harassment. Some people might wonder why he did not go straight for the Nexus, and I think that's a valid criticism, but at the same time, he knows he can't produce like a bunch more Ling. So he's just trying to be annoying, kill off the little bit he can, getting the small victories. And I like that decision. He is continuing to produce drones as opposed to lings to try to shut this down. And this means it's going to be a far more economic and possibly far more technological game. You see him taking a fourth base in response to this. And that means he's got the requisite one base up on his opponent. So the decision making so far very, very strong. However, it has left him exposed with this one spore crawler queen. Doing a good job poking here at the oracle. Another queen going to be swinging in here. And does get sandwiched here and kills off that oracle but at the expense of quite a number of drones. But that was just his third. This is fully saturated again with a 17 out of 16. That's why I'm curious about that. If you guys can, let me know in the comments below. We do have the Baneling Nest coming. More than likely, this will be Hydraling Bane. It's the most popular thing right now, but these four lings are actually still alive. The Adept can't come out of this because it would expose the main and natural. So the low number of ground army is actually able to be very annoying and shut down most map control for Cagnazzo. Cagnazzo cannot even bring this mothership core out because he doesn't know if a set of lings are waiting right over here to come kill this. So he's got to be very careful with his decision making. More oracles are in production. You can see like this is going to be like a mass oracle type thing, three stargates. The second and third one are in production. And we've got Nero going ahead and taking uh, a second, third, fourth gas. Going to be start saturating this soon, but mostly for larva right now. And this game actually is taking a little bit to set up. We've got a little bit of a later pneumatized carapace out of Nero, which I think is a good choice because he does pretty much know this is Stargate 3 base. And he's still getting it, so he'll be able to confirm some things, but by delaying it, he was able to get a slightly better economy, which he's having a hard time spending, but... We're looking at his decision making, not his macro. Plus two uh, melee weapons attack on the way. The 
oracles are moving out to a more offensive position they, um, overlords are in great positions with some decent creep spread as well so he will see the oracles just in the nick of time great spore crawler in position but very easy to target not enough for transfuse on these two good pullback but does lose that oracle uh, we've got a bunch more spore crawlers in production because this is obviously now a mass oracle build which can be incredibly cheesy but has a hard time transitioning um, out of uh, pretty much you're limited just to carrier so at this point Nero knows ground army is really going to be the way he wants to go now the question is what uh, ratio of lings to bane lings to hydras does he elect to do now we still got the small number of lings just being annoying catching the mainerding probes and these are really starting to stack up as good pickups for him he's killed three so far of course, Stasis Ward's going to have to get dropped down because that is going to be the way he's electing to hold ground. Fourth base going to be quite vulnerable, and that is going to be the rally point for Nero's army. He's got a bunch of lings coming in through three different directions and just now wrapping around. Oh, the cannon's not even going to have time to get started, really, before getting shut down. These pylons are going to fall. Most ship core cannot really rally in there because it's too busy dealing with all this stuff here. And... A lot of probes just sitting on that. Does not look like that was actually cancelled by Cagnazzo, so a great pickup there by Nero. Infestation pit going to be completing, so he has not forgotten about Hive Tech. It is only eight minutes in, so this is really good timing on this. Dedicating a lot of his gas to just getting further and further ahead in technology. And more lings just setting off these stasis wards. Going to force constant stasis wards out of the oracles and basically hitting at every base that he can these attacks really aren't designed to kill anything they're just wasting energy he's not like if the stasis wards weren't there maybe he could get a kill but the fact is this is literally just sending like the peasants in your russian army to detonate a mine trap <laughs> like bye bye minefield bye bye peasants no one really cares about these zerglings you know it's brutal but that's the way of war Good splits here, Nero just taking a forward outpost, holding this ground. That's the the really cool part, is he's literally, uh, like, there's no rush on this army. It's just a matter of holding this position, and from here he can choose to attack along this avenue or defend along this avenue. He does set off these stasis wards, great job. He sees the army heading um, towards his main and elects to pull it back by launching right on in here to this a uh, new fourth base location of course some stasis wards going to drop off but the links just setting those off no problem at all very careful not to lose any of these banelings and now the lings the banelings and hydras are going to be swinging over here some queens coming as well going to be engaging these oracles but now we've got a great concave here and as you can see the oracles trying to use their mobility to just get away but Nero not choosing to chase such a kiting force is just going to go ahead and split push right in or into the natural um, and when I say split push I mean that he's attacking this um, and it's like a split in chess where no matter what your opponent is going to be forced to lose something um, not a split push as we would typically think of it in Starcraft but the mothership is on the field now so with a certain lack of overseers that's uh, not the greatest situation for Nero however he has managed to kill off two expansions limiting this uh, to the main and the third at this point which is not going to be able to get any ground army you know rallied up so it's all this air force now again that mothership's very very powerful but there is an overseer now so it's got to slowly be pushed that way and all these ground forces yeah Nero's losing a lot of units you can see it right here um just the raw unit deaths definitely favor Cagnazzo but he's got much more expensive units dying He's losing a lot of gas in these trades, whereas Nero's mostly losing minerals in the form of links. He's got five bases, so he can afford to lose those links. And he's just trading, now six base, he's just trading very unfavorably, if you look at like raw numbers, but he's trading it for bases. And this is what's ultimately going to defeat Cagnazzo. Cagnazzo doesn't have the ability to engage this army head on. And if he could get Nero to um, chase the kiting army, 
that would have worked out for him. He could have bought the time he needed. But just good raw decision making by Nero, totally shutting this down. Not even trying to be clever and abduct the carriers or anything like that. Just killing it off and killing his opponent with nothing but sheer numbers. Hey guys, I am Shaf with Polygon Gaming. If you this, like this type of analysis, make sure you like this video. If this is your first time on our channel, please make sure you hit that red subscribe button or hit the button uh, popping up in just a few moments. I am Shaf with Polygon Gaming. Until next time, Chatelet, my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.